Here we go. Ooh. Welcome to Matt Reviews Books. I am your host, Matt. Getting back into uh, fantasy genre and series. So this is the first one of a uh, three-part series. And this week, we start off with Volume 1 of Catherine Kurtz. Durini Chronicles, Durini Rising, and um, this one was published in 1970. This puppy, this is a great uh, story, and it's chock full of medieval history, except that it doesn't take place on Earth. It's it's a whole different world. This is we're definitely talking about world building here. So a lot of this book, if you want medieval, this is about as close as you're going to get to medieval without being like a history tome. It's not a thick book. It's not. Okay, let's just, let's just move on, okay? And if you haven't heard of Katherine Kurtz, now you have no excuses. So, with that, synopsis! <laughs> Set in the kingdom of Gwynedd, the basic premise of the story is this. Kelson Haldane is the crown prince of Gwynedd. His father, the king, it dies suddenly during a hunt, and suddenly Kelson, who is 14, is now king. He has to learn how to be king, first of all, in his own right, but also he learns some things about the uh, the basis of the Haldane rule in Gwynedd. And so he summons his father's closest advisor from the hinterlands, from the frontier, uh, Alaric Morgan. Morgan shows up, and he's the only one who really has an idea of what is required for a new Haldane king to assume power. This is the important piece because in this world, in um, magic is outlawed. It is banned by the church. Yes, that church. That means that the, the power of the kings, the Haldane kings, have to be kind of couched in this divine right sort of symbolism rather than the Haldanes have magic. There's that. And the second one is, there is a whole race of people, like an entire race of people who were born inherently with magic. They're called the Durini, and they are, are banned from the Eleven Kingdoms. They're not allowed to hold offices, they're not allowed to get married, they're not allowed to be baptized, they're not considered um, protected by the laws, so they're just these outcasts. It's sort of open season on anybody who might be a uh, Durini. And there's backstory to, to why the situation happened. It, it gets unraveled. You know, we, we start seeing what happens through the story. So there's this, this situation that Kelson finds himself in as the king, where, at the one hand, he is the rightful ruler of this big part of the world. And on the other hand, he's playing with... Outlaw magic. Then, there's a second part of the story, which is a geopolitical thriller. There is this person who uh, Kelson's dad killed, right? So the, the dads hate each other, and Brian killed the Marduk, and then his daughter, Charissa, is trying to take revenge and take the throne. She's also a magic user. She's a Durini. But now Kelson, who's 14 and he's trying to learn how to be a king, has to deal with this very experienced, much older magic user and political rival. Then on top of that, the closest advisor to him, Alaric Morgan, um, his a really good friend, probably his best friend, um, is in fact... Uh, also Durini, and he is, um, so, and people start suspecting that he really is a Durini, and his, his uh, proximity to the king and the center of power starts making people really uncomfortable, and there's this thread of um, ecclesiastical uh, drama, this, this threat, this tension between the church and the throne. So that's the setup, yes. There is a dual arcane, and I think, in fact, that's where I get the phrase from. This is one of those books I have read a lot. I think this is another one of those books that I stole from my dad when I was a kid. Moving on uh, to thoughts. <laughs> what did Catherine Kurtz study to be able to write this way? How did, you know, like heraldry, that's, it's a really kind of arcane 
bit of knowledge for people in the 21st century, or at the time I was reading this, the 20th century. You know, the heroes are heroic, but they're not perfect. They're, they do some stuff, and they're, they're, they're people, the humans, and they sometimes make mistakes, and they sometimes they do things I disagree with. But that just sort of means that I've been drawn into the world that Catherine Kurtz wanted me to... Um, to experience. Thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe if you want to see more reviews like this and others. Uh, I will be continuing on with uh, books two and three. There's only three books in this series. Uh, leave a comment uh, and then hit like if you liked it and you know the whole shebang, right? Right. Anyway, uh, I will see you next time.